everybody, welcome back for another Tool Time Tuesday. I'm Melissa Muir. In one of my groups on Facebook called The Jeweler's Corner, we have monthly and weekly challenges. And in this month's challenge, we are talking about unity and putting things together. And I also wanted to introduce a new technique called tube rivets. Well, not everybody knows how to do a tube rivet, so I figured today's Tool Time Tuesday would be a perfect introduction to that. So let's jump right in and let me show you what we're talking about. Tube rivets can be functional, decorative, or both. And here in this case, they happen to be both. What I'm talking about is you can see through these little holes here, and these are rivets. Rivet is a cold connection that allows you to hold multiple layers of material together. And it is a cold connection, meaning that there is no heat involved. We use a mechanical connection. So in this case, we've used a tube or a piece of wire and we have flared it on both sides to hold everything together. So in this case, we've used some tubing again. And again, you just flare each of those ends to allow it to hold things together. On this piece, however, you'll notice that there's nothing being held together. It's purely decorative. So it doesn't have to hold anything together. So it can be a mechanical connection or it can just be purely decorative. Now here you've noticed that I've also used some spacers to give a little bit of depth or dimension to my piece as well. So that's what I mean by they can be decorative, but they can also be functional. So that's what we're talking about with two rivets. So let's talk a little bit about how to create those. Now you can use tubing like this to create those, but you can also buy little pieces of tubing. So in this case, these are three by three millimeter crimp tubes, but crimp tubes come in all different sizes. So there's a number of possibilities out there that you can use. So today I'm going to just take two discs that I've created in copper and we're going to be putting these two together. I'm first going to do a couple of decorative rivets. So I'm going to use these three millimeter tubes and I'm just going to create a couple of decorative tubes um, or tube rivets just to show you how I would do that. So first thing I would want to do, now three millimeters is one eighth inch. So I need a way of creating a one eighth inch hole. And in this case, I happen to have this great punch. It's a three hole punch and there happens to be one for one eighth inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I just randomly placed one on here and I'm going to twist this down to create a hole and then I'm going to untwist. There we go. And there is one hole and I'm going to do another random one here. Bring that down. And I'm just doing these randomly. And bring that back out again. All right, so now I have two holes on here. And now I'm going to bring in my bench block. I also need to have two tubes because those are going to be used for my rivets. First thing I need to do is ensure that my rivet is going to fit within my hole. So I'm just going to test the fit and that fits beautifully. So that looks great. And I also want to make certain it's going to fit through and you can see that it does. So here it fits through. You can see that on the top and the bottom. Now what I'm going to do, I don't want to flare all the way through at the top or the bottom on one side. I have a center punch. Okay, now this is one that I just picked up at the hardware store. So it's not perfect, but it's one that works okay. Mine, I have definitely dressed my face so that it's a little bit more even. It has a nicer surface on that, but you can use whatever you want. You can also use a nice dapping set. Okay, what we need to do here is we just need to flare the top of this. Let me zoom in here just a smidge for you. 
and I'm going to flare just one surface of this, one side. Now I just did three taps there and I'm going to push that through and you'll notice that it has flared here and it's not going to go through all the way. I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to flare the other side. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to flare the first side again. And I'm going to repeat and flare again. And I would do that one more time. Now I'm to the point where my center punch is not going to really flare anymore. Okay, so at this point I would need to switch to another tool, whether I switch to a dapping set or whatever else. I happen to have a hammer that I really like and I will include the link to this down in the comment section, but it just has a small rounded face on both sides. And when I get this, I just polish up the face of this and then I take this and I'm just gently going to finish flaring this out. And that's one side. And now I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to repeat the same thing. And there is now my decorative rivet. And I would repeat this process one more time. So I'm going to do this, but I'm going to speed it up so you guys don't have to wait for the whole thing. Now you'll notice that this one is actually really close to the edge. That is my bad, but it'll work. And there's our decorative rivet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a functional rivet. In this case, I want to rivet this piece onto my larger circle, but I'm going to do one thing in addition to this. I want this piece to be raised up just a little bit, okay? So this one's going to be just slightly different. For this next part, I want to do kind of a raised area, similar to what we have here. Now, tubing comes in all kinds of different material, and in this case, I'm going to use some aluminum tubing. So that's what I have here. Now, you can buy tubing in silver and in copper, but I want to use two different pieces, and one is going to act as a spacer, and one is going to act as the mechanical portion that's going to hold everything together. But in any case, I need one piece to fit inside of the other piece, like so. So that's what we're looking for in this case. So here I have a 1 8 inch and a 3 32nds inch. So let's say we want this to come up about 5 millimeters. So what I would do is I'm going to set my dividers at about 5 millimeters here and I'm going to mark my tubing at five millimeters and that's going to tell me where I need to cut the tubing. Now in this case I have a piece of tubing and it is too short for me to be able to cut this in my tube cutting jig. So I've just inserted it onto the end of one of my pliers and it fits right inside of this beautifully. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use that and just kind of come in here and let that hold that into, into place for me as I cut this. And now I have my spacer. Now that we have the spacer, the next step we need to do is to create 
the hole that is going to go through both of our pieces that are going to hold everything together. And that is going to be for our 332nd. Now again, I happen to have a 332nd inch uh, hole punch and that's what I'm going to be using. But first I need to figure out where I want this to be. Now I'm going to have this positioned so that my piece is a little off center from the top on the top piece. And then, um, so I'm going to kind of position this right here, kind of in the center there. And I'm going to do the top piece first and then I'll use the hole that I make in this one to determine where I need that for the bottom piece. And you can also test fit your tubing just to make certain that that will go through. And that looks great to me. So now what I'm going to do is use this as kind of my guide. And again, mark my hole here. And we will cut out our hole on this piece. Now, before I can totally put this together, I'm going to have to cut this tube right here to size. So what I'm going to have to do is assemble everything. So I'm first going to put it through the top, put my spacer tube on, and then assemble the whole stack together. Now I can see already that my tube is too big because I only need about a millimeter or so coming out the back. And again, about another millimeter or so coming out the top. So the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of push this up so that I have the proper amount here in the back. And then I'm gonna push this down so that my center portion aligns properly. Okay, so that's about what I want here on the back. I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to eyeball or use my you know, a Sharpie or something, or I could use a scribe, whatever you decide you want. And then I'm just going to mark a line here on the front for how short I wanna cut on the top. Now this is a really simplistic example, guys. This is very wonky. I would not use this as my piece. But again, just to show you guys kind of an example of how to create these two rivets. So now I'm gonna pull everything apart. There's my line. So now I'm gonna use either my tube cutting jig or I can use um, my pliers again to hold everything into place to get this cut. And now we're ready to assemble everything. So once again, I'm going to put my centerpiece in here, put the spacer on, all right. And then I want to just take the time to align this how I want it to look here on the front. And this one can be a little bit tricky. So now that I've got everything aligned, again, I'm going to use my center punch and just gently, I'm going to flare the top edge of this. And I'm going to flip this over, push everything down against that flare that we just created. And one more time, I'm gonna flare again. Now here's the thing that's very, very important. You need to make certain you are rested up against that tube rivet and that everything is nice and flat. And sometimes that can be a little bit difficult, especially if you have a big stack that's kind of uh, unstable. So take some time to really get things balanced. And I know I make everything look ridiculously simple. That's my knack, I do that. So I'm gonna flare again. And I wanna just take the time, make sure I flip this over. So notice that I'm just doing it in small increments. And just flip it over again. All right, and now 
I'm going to take that little hammer of mine and I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to repeat on the back. So now I have decorative rivets and I have a functional rivet with a spacer. And there's our piece. If you are on Facebook and you have not joined us already, we invite you. It's called the Jewelers Corner. We have challenges, like I said, every week, every month, and I look forward to seeing your pieces as you join in. As always, if you guys enjoy the videos, please make sure you subscribe, ring that bell, mark that you would like the notifications so that you don't miss any of these videos. And we will see you guys next time. Have a good week.